believe you got terrible in your mind. She said, shit, I don't know. I don't know everything. I wish I knew everything. Hey, well, we're doing that. Who do you want in this game? Yeah. Well, it's not really weird. We have Mr. Markels with us again. <laughs> Our lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My co host. <laughs> Tracy, she is an activist in the community, and she's our IT person. And we have Mr. Brandon, who's the vice president of the Arlington Black Chamber of Commerce. Uh, 
So I just kind of want to hear from the panel like your personal experience. Just to start us off, uh, your personal experience uh, with family and friends, like I guess your coming out type of deal. Did you tell a best friend first? Did you tell your parents first? Did, did somebody out you? Uh, did you come out yourself? Or uh, I'm gonna say maybe you're not out yet, but I'm clearly you on know, you on you on social media, so I'm assuming you know family and friends know. So uh, Tracy, I guess I'll start with you. Uh, well, I guess my friends already knew. It wasn't really a big surprise, uh, even though I didn't know it myself. Necessarily, kind of struggled with um, my identity in that regard, but it was just—I don't know. Like they, they uh, knew before I even knew. Um, uh, so you know, when it was, it was easy coming out to them because they were like family. Um, as far as my in immediate family, it was a little more difficult. Um, it wasn't. We, I grew up in the church, so you know we that's you know that's what we did. If I wasn't at home or at school, I was at church. So it was one of those things where it was very difficult. But by that time, I knew who I was. So it wasn't. It was more so of having them understand that I'm still the same person. Um, I just happened to like women. So it wasn't necessarily. It was difficult, um, but it was one of those things that we was able to work through because we're pretty close family. So how is it like? How is it now? Like with your family? Is it more? Are they more comfortable? Or is it like? Still some tension maybe between parents versus cousins. I know every family member is different. Yeah, of course. There's um there's not any tension um between my family or anything like that. Um like with my you know, my parents, um, they will want to meet whoever I date. I just haven't found anybody that I would want to take home to them, you know. So it's one of those things where I know that they're not they weren't comfortable, you know, in the beginning. So I'm not gonna be the person that's gonna give them an uncomfortable situation when I can avoid it. Like, yeah. there's no need to introduce somebody that is not going to stick around. Yeah, that's not going to stick around. It's a waste of time. Oh, you got a Brandon. Mr. Brandon's not here. He's a little more going on. <laughs> so, Brandon, we were just talking about, like, friends and family and kind of, like, how people's personal family friends have taken their sexuality or uh, with good or bad, starting, out, starting off as when you're younger, right, in current currently uh, so that's kind of where we start off uh, so the friends kind of like where has your experience been with your family friends media circle uh, it was easy okay. it was uh, very easy and um, while I'm thinking about it um, my father when he was living uh, was very open-minded and very um, helpful mm -hmm. um, so I didn't have a hard um, I didn't have the difficulties that a lot of people had with that so it wasn't a problem um, shockingly because my father was a national well-known preacher so wow that's good yeah, that's real good you don't hear that, don't hear that too often Now, how's your relationship with your family? Uh, father's deceased. Mother passed away shockingly two years ago. So that's um, over and done with. So family is, biological family is gone. Uh, my godfather's actually on Facebook watching live. So hey, godfather. Hey, hey. hi, daddy. <laughs> He's from Philadelphia, so he spouse have actually been in my life since I've been little. So, so it seemed like you had support from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Which is good because, I mean, I hear so many stories from people who don't clearly have that, so that's good. What about you, Brandon? Like, what what has your experience been with friends, family, around your sexuality, uh, support, rejection, all the above? <laughs> so the same thing with my cousins. Uh, pretty much the same as as long 
long as nobody's harming you, mm-hmm. we don't really care. Uh, friends, I've lost friends. Yeah. Uh, when I told them, uh, a lot of my homeboys uh, stop being friends with me. Uh, they didn't want to be associated. Um, people came up with lies and said I was trying to talk to them and sleep with them or whatever the case may be. And I always tell people, you ain't got nothing I want. Yeah. Um, so, uh, <laughs> but if it's easy for you to let go, then we wouldn't have friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so for me, I, I'm okay with whatever, whatever happens. Yeah. So. I think when I, uh, like, I officially came out, so I'm sure people do. <laughs> so, but when I officially came out, it was, I think I was 23. I was in Conway at UCA. Uh, she's gonna talk about some of y'all from Arkansas. And I remember I was more I was worried about like most of my male cousins because I'm from a uh, a family that has a lot of cousins, right? It's a lot of us, second, third, fourth cousins. And so I grew up in a small town, so my cousins were my friends. Like summer basketball, like they would just. So I was more worried about my male cousins. Because most of my female cousins, they were going to care in no way. But I was more worried about my male cousins. And luckily, like, they, when I came, I came out via my face, long story behind that. Yes, my face. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I remember my male cousins were, like, didn't treat me different. And I was totally shocked. Like, I just knew. I, mean, I didn't think they were, like, verbally going to say anything. You know, but, like, I thought they were going to stop hanging out with me. You know, like, when I came home from school, you know, we might go to a bar, have a drink. I thought they were going to stop inviting me, but not, everything just kept ticking. I think I lost more of friends versus family, and I was more worried about family. So I was very involved in my church at that time, and so, like, I had church friends kind of slowly but surely, like, back away. And that was my, then my only type of social network. Like, I wasn't going, I wasn't going to college parties and nothing, so my church friends were, like, really my only friend. So they kind of started back in a way slowly but surely and you know they make they make excuses of but I mean I, we ain't done I know right, why yeah because yeah, like now I'm living in sin or I'm doing something you clearly don't agree with so they kind of started backing away so I kind of dealt with that for the first couple of years after quote unquote coming out it was the my social network not being the same anymore mm-hmm. and then I'm living in Arkansas so it's not like there was like a gay community mm-hmm. per se out loud right so it's not like I could say, oh, I need some more friends. Like, I just didn't have, you know, a whole bunch of people to go to at that point. Uh, the church was my only friend at, at that time. Uh, my, I remember texting my mom because uh, I was so nervous. Before I put it on my face, I, you know, clicked. I, I didn't want to come out on social media and not tell her first. But I remember texting her. I'm like, if I was gay, what would you say? Clearly, that's telling her face, right? Way. And she was like, oh, I'll still love you. And so that was all I needed. And I remember <laughs> the next day, she, you know, I don't know if you remember my face, you could change your orientation. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember that just straight I gay vibe on my face. Yeah. And I, oh, and I changed it. And then that was just like the rest is history. Yeah. How do y'all personally deal with rejection? Because, uh, I mean, on some level, not many that all, because I know the person said he had a lot of, he had a lot of support. But, but how do how did how do y'all and how did y'all deal with rejection? Whether it's from like you know friends or cousins or uh, even the small re- even the uh, the passive rejection, you know stuff saying stuff like you know I don't agree, but you know even like that like they love you, but I just can't accept it. Right. But even even to in my opinion, that's still some form of rejection. Uh, so, how do y'all deal with rejection? I can't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you both got the answer. Like, whoever first. Uh, see, I get it from multiple angles again, remember, because I hold a ministerial position. So, of course, in ministry, a lot of my friends are like, uh uh-uh, uh, you're going to class every day, we have, you know, instilled in you. This is against the Bible and da 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 da. And I and I always tell people it's your interpretation of God's word. And this is my interpretation, because I still go off God said I love everybody. And so even with friends, family, of course it hurts. Yeah. Not gonna say it's oh yeah. I'm I'm I don't have emotions. No, I do. 
when you think that these people are there and they're behind you, they're supportive of you and everything that you do, and to hear them say, we can no longer be friends, I don't no longer want to hang with you, you're disgusting, you're this, you're that, of course it hurts. So for me, how I dealt with it is, is when I was younger, I resorted to uh, cutting myself, I resorted to uh, attempting a suicide um, because I just didn't feel like I was a normal kid. Um, as an adult, um, I went into an isolated place where I don't want to talk to nobody. Don't I didn't go on social media. I didn't do all of that. That's not what I do. Uh, but I just got to the point where I was almost antisocial. Like I don't want to go out. I don't want to do anything because I don't want anybody to sit up here and throw up in my life, in my face about my life. Mm-hmm. And so, from, of course, it's always difficult. But now, understanding that everybody has an opinion. Yeah, but, as long right. as, right. but as long as I don't allow you to no longer categorize me, then I feel like I still have power. Because you're not going to determine who I am or how I live my life. like it. Love it. Before you jump in, um, while you were talking about you, 26% of LGBT youth say their biggest problems are not feeling accepted by their family, um, trouble at school, bullying, and a fear to come in out or open. 22% of done LGBTQ, um, you say that their biggest problem are trouble with class, exams, and grades. Um, so this came from the Human Rights Campaign. So that that's a high percentage of people who say, hey, my biggest problem is my friends and family don't accept me. So that's one reason why we wanted to have this conversation tonight is to let people know, like, hey, not saying that you have to agree with me with my lifestyle, but at least respect me. Well, I think even with that, last time my last segment, we talked, to, we had a conversation. I told you, my mom literally looked me in my face and said, if you are gay, I'm going to disown you today. That is the worst thing I've ever wanted to hear my mom tell me. Of course. Of course. <laughs> and so even to this day, we don't discuss it. She was like, will you bring me grandchildren? I said, I'll bring you some puppies. Yes, puppies. She gets, gets over the... I, but I yeah. try to avoid that conversation yeah. because I just don't ever want to disappoint. And that's the thing in our community, we don't talk about stuff, we just suppress it. You know, like, the big elephant in the room, we just keep passing over like it's not there. Like, that's still a main issue. So hopefully one day you all can sit down and talk about it and get some understanding because you're going to continue to be you and your mom will continue to be her, but at least we can, y'all can come to common ground on it and she don't have to say, we're going to get some grandkids or you say, hey, I'm bringing some puppies. <laughs> you kind of know where you stand, you know? So I hopefully that, that relationship is vended there. I mean, how, how, how have you handled any type of rejection? Uh, I want to say when I was younger, it was very hard. Um, that was when it was the most difficult because I didn't know how to handle my emotions just mm-hmm. as a whole. Um, so when it came to rejection, you know, I really secluded myself, but I was able to find an outlet through poetry. So it was one of those things where, yes, I was, you know, by, I may have gone by myself, you know, didn't really talk. You know, there was times where I didn't eat. Um, I remember not eating for a week, not really having an appetite, but through my poetry, I was able to kind of express myself. And then as I got older and went off to college, it was one of those things where I realized that I am me. I am who I am, and I'm a great person. So if you can't accept me in my greatness, then you don't deserve me. And that's, you know, just that's relationships, that's friendships, that's any type of, you know, shit that you're on. I deal with it now. It's not a. I don't feel rejected. I just know. Okay, you you are meant to be in my life for as you know as long yeah. as I thought, yeah. and that's okay. Mm-hmm. That's good. Well, first, oh, sorry. Now, I was like, how how do you handle rejection with friends, or how how have you handled rejection? Uh, as far as my earlier life, that wasn't an issue. Um, but now that I'm 45 years old. Rejection is an everyday thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Dealing with the fakeness with even in our own community. Mm -hmm. Um, Oftentimes, and I am a licensed ordained minister, prophet, well, elder, prophet, whatever you want to go there with all that nonsense. But I, um, it's either you like it or you don't. I have chosen at my, this stage.
stage in my life that I don't have to kiss nobody's behind yeah. for me to accept who I am. Yeah. So I, I deal with rejection on a daily basis, whether it's job, so-called faith, family, so-called, um, because oftentimes in this community, we call each other brothers and sisters mm -hmm. too loosely. Yeah. And so you can't say you're my brother or my sister, but then you can't support anything that I have going on mm -hmm. unless your name is on the flyer. Mm -hmm. um, so that to me is a form of rejection. Mm -hmm. A couple weeks ago, I had a mental breakdown behind it because it was getting to the point of you want support, you want me to support you, but then you can never support anything. stage of my life is either bye because I, I actually prayed I was like God give me the gift of goodbye quickly mm -hmm. because you'll actually end up stressing yourself out trying to make people like you changing your hairstyles changing all this stuff trying to dress a certain way trying to look a certain way mm -hmm. and they're still not going to be satisfied yes I love it and people are watching, yes, that is, people do it all the time. They change their physical appearance to try to fit in, but you are who you are, so who you are is going to come out eventually. Um, roughly three times, three quarters, which is 73% 73, 73 of LGBTQ youth say they are more honest with themselves online than in the real world. And that's not surprising. Yeah. You know, people hide behind a computer all day, every day. <laughs> and the beehive, y'all got on that one lady. But I mean, people hide behind a computer all day and feel that they can be the authentic self with total strangers <coughs> than they can with their friends and family. And it's sad. I mean, I have, you know, I'm pretty close to most people in here. I'm like, hey, you know, I should feel comfortable. Like, if you're my friend, if you're my family member, I should feel comfortable to tell you what's going on and not worry about you judging my characteristics. Yes. Because that's not who I am. My characteristics are not, doesn't make me. So like you said, you're still a good person. I think now we've gotten to the point where friendship is thrown loose. Yeah. Um, just as I was saying, bro, sis, it, it's, you're my friend and you're my brother and you're my sister as long as I'm kissing your behind. Yeah. Or if I come to you and I say I'm having a weak moment or I'm depressed, can you really accept that and not screenshot my conversations mm -hmm. or not record my conversations or a whole lot of sneaky stuff mm -hmm. and then that's why I feel like a lot of people can't open up yeah. and be true and be honest because we'll never get to the point in this community of being totally accepted when we're destroying each other in our own community. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, th I think one, yeah. one of the things we do is that we we expect certain things from certain people that they just can't, they just they can't give or that or they're not. Like this, to me, there's different levels to friendship. Mm -hmm. Like there's some people that they're my friend, but I know they they're just going out to have drinks, friend. Mm -hmm. Like I don't I don't put this expectation that they can handle my secrets or handle my struggles because they can't, right? Mm -hmm. So I, people make the mistake of oh if she if she just my brunch friend. But I'm, I'm, but I'm sharing secrets, secrets with her. She's not that type of friend. Like, so this, to me, there's different levels, or you may call them associates, right? There's different levels to friendships, uh, relationships. I don't treat every person the same. I have my good, good Judy's that they know my secrets, they know my struggles, they know. But then I have some other good Judy's, but they're just party Judy's, and that's okay. That's okay yeah. I've learned not to mix up the expectation of the two. Mm -hmm. Certain people are just my. We go, we link up every month and have drinks. They're my friends, I love them, but they can't handle my my brokenness. Mm -hmm. They can't handle even my success, right? Because some people get jealous, right? right? They can't handle that part. Mm -hmm. They just can handle what's the tea? Let's go have a let's go have let's go have a drink. And that's cool, that's just where we are. But everybody's not that friend where that can like that, that you can share your secrets, that you can share your intimate, the intimate parts of you, the good, the bad, the ugly. But I think 
and I, we, I think, well, I think for everybody, I know I've done it, where I've mixed up the two. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, Le Prince may be my drinking friend, but I mistaken thought he was my friend friend I could share that with, and then they couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. You and know. And then you gotta also watch out for people that pretend to be that friend that you can, you, you know, confide in, that you can go to, and you know, you really believe that you develop this, but underlining, they have an issue with who you are, and not necessarily how you portray yourself, but it could be your success. It could be, you know, where you are in life, and they envy you. Right. And so they're like, okay, well, I'm going to get in good with you, and we're going to be friends, we're going to kick it. You know, I'm going to make you really believe that you can trust in me. And when you do trust in me, oh, it's it's, uh, it's all it's about to break loose. I'm that wolf. Yeah, you I'm not that sheep that you thought I was. I'm that wolf that it came out. So it's one of those things where you have to learn how to navigate people. But in life, if you always try to put out good, yeah. then you receive more good than you do bad. And, you know, I'm a firm believer in that, and I, it's just one of those things that I've seen happen day by day. So putting out, good, like, you'll have those one and two that'll come in, and they'll try to, you know, sneak attack you, but you can see them, mm -hmm. because you notice that it's a different energy, it's a mm -hmm. different vibe, mm -hmm. so. And that's what I'm dealing with. Um, it, it's, it's scary. somebody's watching me now and they know I love food and they I was trying not to giggle out loud but they know me so well that when I leave here I'm putting something in my stomach mm -hmm. that's the type of person I need in my life but then you have some people that will notice that if I text you and we've been having conversations and then today I start texting you or you text me and then I'm short with one word, something should click in our relationship and say, hey, what's wow. going on? Mm -hmm. Why are you? Mm -hmm. And so I'm running into the fakeness mm -hmm. of people that's, it's scary. Mm -hmm. Because as you were saying, success and then jealousy, don't get jealous, just ask me where, where I'm going. Mm -hmm. Or find out what avenue did I take to get to what, what doors are opening up. Mm -hmm. So that's the scary part. Now the associates, I'm quicker to open up to. Or the people that I'm just meeting because I don't see the motive. Now I know, Brandon, you in the community. I mean, you are over. I'm sick of you. Like, every time I get on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Snap, you are everywhere. I want to be where you are because you are just meeting people and greeting people. So, Prince, you are a good face, a prominent face in the community. I know you experience. Like, how do you tell different from the real, from the fake, when you can tell somebody's coming to you, genuinely want to, you know, be your associate, be your friend, or be interested in what you're doing for the community versus in someone who's just kind of get, trying to get the tea? How well, do you? Well, right now. I've been posting more of I would rather be alone than to have some strangers around me. Um, because every time I look up, what I realize is the enemy is showing his hand more this time around. Because everybody starts a conversation, I want to be connected with you because of who you know. Like they're bold with it. And I always tell them, I'm sorry, I don't associate myself with the people. 
individuals that want to be leeches. <laughs> yeah. I, I agree. I like that. But I guess at my age, if you come at me like that, then I know what box to put you in. <clears throat> now, don't get me wrong. Let me, I'm gonna, don't get me wrong with that. I don't want to, I don't, I'm not going to go too deep with you. And I'll tell you this up front. I'm not going to go too far with you as far as you need to know too much about me. Now, I don't mind helping anybody. Everybody know I support everybody. You can say, Brandon, come be here at this time. That's why I was rushing to get here because I support everybody. But what I'm not going to do is for those type of individuals, I can't tell you about my secrets. Because I understand that you have a motive that you can use against me at any point to destroy what I'm already building right. on that platform. Um, but I'm like you sometimes. Sometimes I am open with strangers than I am with the people that's closer to me. Because what I realize is even the people that are closer to me, I can no longer trust. Um, I have a friend of 20 years that he used to call me when I when you didn't have a car, when you didn't have this, when you didn't have that. Now that you got it, I'm no longer existing. Anybody that seems like they got more to offer you, you gravitate toward them, and then when they leave you high and dry, you get annoyed with them. You feel like you I would rather sit and be alone than to have those type of people that are draining me. Mm -hmm. Because I do tell people, as you see, I do. I'm out in the community. I have counseled people. I have, I'm a life coach. I'm this. I'm that. And I have all of these umbrellas that people see me as. Mm -hmm. But I'm also human. I want, I want some love and affection for friends, family, and everything. But lately, I have not been able to see that. So lately, I've kind of put myself in in a box or a bubble to try to protect yeah. what little I have left over me. And that's the that's where I'm at. Um, again, people that I've known for years and they don't know me anymore. And I, I can't fault them because something has to be wrong with a person if you're doing the same thing yeah. over and over. No growth mm -hmm. or whatever, so I can't fault them. But it's scary mm -hmm. that you can't tell that I'm having a bad day. Mm -hmm. But then my staff can tell yeah. that something's wrong. Or when I get up to minister in different churches, mm -hmm. um, there's just what scares me in today's LBG. All these letters because I, I found out um, on, on a movie set that they added two more. Um, but what scares me is this generation, we're destroying one another. Um, I am very vocal about it, um, I don't hide it. I do not have a lot of male. thing is, I have a, now I have to label them as an associate, mm -hmm. somebody I've known for 13 years. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, go look at this film, it's out, this is one of multiple that are coming out, and it's actually turned into series. Well, I just canceled my Amazon Prime. And so it, it kind of hit me. 
button for 30 days. And so that's where the scary part is mm -hmm. because it's like this generation has gotten so disloyal and so distrusting and so hateful. Mm -hmm. But then we want the outside to have the audacity to support us. You know, the one thing I preach, you know, uh, to my client as a counselor is that you need to get used to rejection, right? Like, it's just part of the game. And once you get used to it, that doesn't mean it, it doesn't sting a little bit, but you know how to readjust. You know how to bounce back. Mm -hmm. Rejection is just part of it. Whether, I mean, whether you're LGBTQ or not, rejection is part of life. But I especially tell people in the community, if you're LGBTQ, there's always some level of rejection. Whether it's in the dating world, whether it's with friends or family, like what Prince was saying, whether it's, I need you to support me, people reject it, re reject it, re rejecting you on that aspect. It's always a level of rejection. So in, until you get used to that concept, now, it's a, it's a balance to it. I'm not telling people not to trust nobody, because some people can take that to the extreme and like, you know, like, fuck everybody. Right, no, yeah, it. yeah, I'm not saying that. <coughs> I'm not saying walk around with a chip in your shoulder and not trust people. What I'm saying is rejection is part of, it's part of it. Whenever you live in truth, no matter what that truth is, some people are going to reject it. Whether your truth is, hey, I'm this, this is my goal, this is who I am, right? There's always a level of rejection mm -hmm. from some people. If Tracy says, hey, this is who I am, not not just not just being in the community, but I want to be an entrepreneur, someone's going to reject that. Are you a business owner? Are you a business owner? You know, what's that? There's always a level of rejection whenever you live in honesty, whenever you, whenever you live in truth. And so until you kind of get that concept, and or when you get that concept, you're you're not easily offended. Right. Not that doesn't seem that doesn't mean doesn't still sting here and there. But I've learned a long time ago, I'm gonna get rejected, no matter what, no matter what truth I live in, someone's not gonna like it. And so I need to know how to bounce back quick. Because I don't have the energy to be mad, depressed, offended for the next three months because you don't love me, because you don't support me. I'm gonna I'm, I'm process that thing and then I'm gonna move on because it's just part it's just part of the game. Right. And like we were talking about, we said every series is the people are looking for affirmation. They're looking for someone to say, Hey, I accept you. And like you said, you might not ever get that and you still have to be okay. And I think that's where this generation coming up, they're kinda weaker, I feel like, than us. You know, no disrespect, but they are. I mean We've been through some things. We have, we can tell our head up high a little bit more. We can put a shield on. But the young people, they just they don't have hope. So to me, it's just like they'll just rather pick up a gun and do violence or, you know, bully someone or, you know, try to gang up on someone. It's just they're looking for ways out. And to me, they're acting out. They Some people are not listening to them. So we have to help our youth. And you've heard it, and Tracy and Brandon probably last time, I'm going to always say this until I can't say it no more. Do you deserve acceptance? Do you deserve people to believe in your dreams and believe in your identity? Do you deserve it? Yeah, we talk about deserving, because you deserve it. Will you always get it? No. And so when you come to the conclusion, like, everyone's not going to get me. Everybody's not going to validate me. It becomes easier, right? Yeah. Because... I know that everybody's not going to validate. Do I, do I deserve a pat on my back? Or do I deserve people, but people you love? I ain't talking about the person at Walmart. I'm talking about people, your friends, family, mama, daddy, whoever. Do you deserve that validation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you deserve it. But sometimes you just not going to get it. Like the, like, the, like the old grandma said, baby, sometimes you just not going to get it. Mm -hmm. And so if you get stuck with my daddy, my mama, my best friend, whoever won't give me that, you'll miss life. I think that's where I'm at that point of I'm not tolerating fakeness mm -hmm. on any level. Mm -hmm. Do not say you love me <laughs> and you cannot show it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm at that point of having the gift of goodbye and be okay with that okay, yeah. because you're already saying goodbye yeah. on the other side of the table without your support mm -hmm. and then you cannot say that you love a person and not be any type of support and have support 
So that's where um, I wrestled for the past three weeks of categories. I'm not even doing categories no more. It's either you with me a hundred percent or you not because I will stress myself out, irritate myself, and can't focus on what I need to do. Um, and then when I get to where I need to go, then you'll try to come find me and it'll be too late. Um, in ministry, I got to the point where I was sick of um, my gift being prostituted. sounds arrogant and it sounds cocky but that's just where I'm at I, have to, I can't you have to people I have a problem with churches that know the sexuality of someone but you don't accept you'll get up and you'll talk about it but then when it's time for a musical you talk don't know how to find that person <laughs> talk to uh, when it's time to direct the choir know how to reach that person mm -hmm. talk to them. but then there's still the faggot or there's still mm -hmm. the sissy mm -hmm. or there's still the, the lesbian or whatever the lesbian drunk mm -hmm. but then none of your heterosexuals can do what you want them to do mm -hmm. so no longer am I allowed myself to be prostituted <laughs> because I like that. you have an issue with me and I, I that's where it's getting it's getting sickening to me. Yeah, yeah. So either, and thank God, um, I'm at a church here in Arlington where I don't have to hide what I do. Right. I went to my pastor and I said, there's going to be some films that's coming out that might cause the church to tell me goodbye. And I'm okay with that because there will be some sex scenes, there will be some of this, there will be some I'll have to end up cussing. Mm -hmm. And if they can't separate the acting mm -hmm. from speaking in tongues, then they have a problem. They have no balance in life. And my pastor said to me, I'm your pastor. Mm -hmm. So all that other nonsense is it's just, uh, I, I do. I, I really now am at the level of goodbye. Sometimes you have to Ooh. get to that point with people, mm -hmm. and it's, it's it's a hard transition, especially if you're a loving person and a caring person, and you always want to be there for people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to realize you have you have to just let that separation happen, mm -hmm. even if even though it hurts and it's gonna hurt, mm -hmm. but you have to for your own personal well-being. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, you know, like like you said, you will drown in it. And, yeah. and it'll just and it'll be it, you'll just keep drowning. You think you're pulling yourself up, but it's like jello. You're not getting out of it because you're still engulfed in it. Like yeah. you really have yeah. to just completely separate. Mm -hmm. And so we we have a few more minutes left for the people who are watching that want to be allies, that want to be supportive, that want to like you know I have a gay I have a gay son, I have a trans brother, I have you know a lesbian friend like. What would you tell that ally how to support that person, right? So I want each of y'all to give some advice to people that are listening that will watch this. It says, I want to be supportive. I don't want to be, I want to love. I want to know how to support. I don't know the right lingo. Uh, what would you tell them? I think one of the things I always tell people, regardless of anything, I don't care what your sexuality is, God gave us two ribs and one mouth. Yeah. Talk less, listen more. Because when you listen more, you can hear exactly how I'm feeling, what I'm going through, whatever experience that I have, and then address accordingly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we talk before we listen. And we end up hurting when we didn't mean to hurt. Mm -hmm. It is no different than when we talk about people going through suicide. You may have the intentions of, I want to save you, mm -hmm. but I might give you a trigger word that might push you because we didn't listen enough. Mm -hmm. And so if I give any 
everybody in life is to stop talking. Just listen and be open to what is being given to you. It's not going to always be easy. The information you might hear is, might be kind of difficult to swallow. But guess what? Life is difficult to swallow. And if you're able to live your life, then be able to be grown enough to listen to their struggles and then address. Yeah. What, would you, what would you say to someone who maybe has a daughter that may be living or a niece or anything like that? I, it was going to be similar to that, but I can't even, you know, so you summed it up so beautifully, I, I can't really follow. But um, I guess just be open mm -hmm. to listen. You, you don't necessarily have to even give an answer. You don't even have to respond sometimes. But a, I feel like a lot of people who are young, they just need somebody to talk to and to, and to figure out how to deal with others. Mm -hmm. That's like what it really boils down to. So if you have somebody that's in your family that needs somebody to talk to, they're probably gonna talk to you about how to deal with all these other people that they believe or, you know, like like you were saying, like their friends or people that, you know, they want to interact with and they and they want to be the true selves but they can't. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 listening, but then just, just being there. Mm -hmm. Um they'll come to you when they're ready. Mm -hmm. But if you're not there, they won't know to come. Mm -hmm. And then they'll go out somewhere else looking for, you know, not like acceptance, you know, like we were saying, they may go out and look for it somewhere else. Like be there. Be there, you know, to to just be I agree with the listening wholeheartedly. Um, one of the key things that we got to also try to remember is what if it was you? Mm -hmm. um, what if you were the one that was dealing with rejection? And if the truth be told, everybody on the face of this earth deals with some type of something. Mm -hmm. We don't like something. Um, you know, somebody may not like the fact that you're, they will probably say, oh, she's not professional enough because she has red hair. Mm -hmm. To me, that's stupid. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we would listen, put ourselves in that type of situation. Love without condition. Mm -hmm. People, again, I go back to it, only love us based, some people, you have some people that only love us based on accept all of me mm -hmm. because see if I can't give you all of me then I feel like I'm being fake with you yeah. mm -hmm. and then you really don't know me so therefore you can't even say that you love me right. yeah. 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 so love without conditions mm -hmm. because if I can't have an emotional moment with you or if I can't say I'm having this um when I hit 40, a weird thing happened, and I know we're probably running out of time, a weird thing happened with, I started liking dominant looking women. I was starting to be sexually attracted to dominant looking women mm -hmm. um, because it just happened. And then having so many issues with the black gay male, it just became disgusting to me. Mm -hmm. It made me itch. So it's like, okay, I wrestled with that because I was like, something's not right. The weird thing was I ended up dating someone and I took her to church. Their eyes were kind of like, mm, okay, what's going on? But then, you, but then you accepted more of my prophetic gift now you want me to get up in the pulpit more so than if I had brought a male. Mm -hmm. So you were still fake. Mm -hmm. That's a part, another part of the rejection. We can just get back to the foundation of what if it was us. Mm -hmm. Love it. We talk the talk.
Because I feel like if you accept yourself and you love yourself, what everybody else thinks doesn't even matter. And I got to a point in my age, in my life, like, I, I don't care what people say. You're not paying my bills. You're not, you know, taking me out to eat. <laughs> you're not taking care of my greedy son. So <laughs> if what's your opinion, really, that's what it is. It's opinion. Um, and so I just say, if you love yourself and accept yourself, then if you're true to who you are, then what everybody else thinks is that, it doesn't even matter. And I always tell, oh, oh, I'm sorry, it's funny how people's opinions will never come to your face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, yeah. no. They yeah. always go to you. I'm having, <laughs> I'm, I'm having a field day now. Because, as I said, your screenshot conversations, yeah. 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 your record phone conversations, but you won't bring your issues oh, to my face right. or your, your opinion. And it, it's weird. Or you just tell everybody else. You tell yeah. everybody else, oh, well, I don't like this about La France or I don't like this. I had a, a conversation because I changed my hairstyle multiple times, but you never asked me mm-hmm. what I was doing as a reason why my hairstyle was changing and then why I had 14 inches one day and now I'm totally bald. Mm-hmm. Could it be that I'm getting paid to look different? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I have but you have direct access to me mm-hmm. and well they did because now I know um, I used to say that I didn't want my enemies close come sit on my lap baby um June thank y'all for um, doing that series we will do another one, um, our last one will be July 9th, I believe, and we will talk about the struggles within the LGBT community and relationships, the LGBT community relationships. So y'all are more than welcome to join that panel discussion. June is Pride and National Hunger Awareness Month. There's all type of pride events going on. Um, so y'all have fun and be careful. And the reason why we do Mask Off panel, a lot of people like to know who's joining in, why we do, we do, what's our purpose and how. Our purpose of Mask Off Panel is to provide a non-judgmental platform um, for people to discuss all concerns regarding mental and emotional health. Why we do it, it's time to do something about mental and emotional health problems and not just talk about it. So yes, we are having a conversation, but we are sharing, we like it, people are listening to us, people are starting conversations, so that's the main thing. Um, and how we serve as the glue that connects people to the right resources to begin their journey toward a healthy and mental an emotional lifestyle. Um, we want to thank Miss Kristen May with Blue Yeti for donating our my, Yeti mics. Thank you so much. She saw um, our our posts and she saw our videos and she loved what we were doing and she donated two Yeti mics. And so and they're really expensive. So we appreciate you for that. Um, we also would like to thank the Warm Place for allowing us to volunteer this past Friday. If you don't know about the Warm Place, they are in Fort Worth, and they help children who have lost loved ones, family members. They give them a place to talk about it and, you know, just have an out. So we volunteered this past Friday. It was so humbling and touching to just see the smiles on people who have lost parents that's young. Um, so definitely check them out. I want to thank my team, my panelists. We do have a couple of events coming up. Um, there is a blood drive on the 15th, which is this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., Free food, free food. We'll be there. <laughs> they usually get people out, um, and that will be posted on our website for the blood donation. We are doing um, partnering with the HDNP International for their feed the homeless and clothing drive, which will be on June 21st from 11 a.m. at Unity Park in Fort Worth. And also, we are all doing our own bottle, bottle water and hygiene drive on August 10th. Um, so you can watch our Facebook page and our website to, if you want to volunteer and help donate, we will be getting ready to put stuff out there. I have to give a shout out to my sponsors, Kids World Child Care. Um, they provide all your child care needs located in Conway, Arkansas. Veteran Cleaning Services, where they're veteran owned, where they give veterans second chances. I love that concept. That's a good thing. Um, education for Exceptionalities is an education consulting company that focuses on special education advocacy and federal programs and they support schools all across the country so definitely check them out bless gals in conway arkansas heavy concepts they're a streetwear lifestyle brand and they volunteer with our youth um, they, they look out for the vulnerable youth willow street event center 
um, the Confess Project, Naima Pants, Mental Health Connection, Mind Above Matter. You can go to our website and see all of our sponsors and how to contact them. Our list is steady growing, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and also, I would like to say that hotlines, <coughs> Trevor Hotline and Trans Hotline. Those are two hotlines if you need help. You can contact them. They're really good organizations, um, and they will get you the resources that you need. And that's all I have besides the next show that we have coming up next month. Um, we will talk about, I know you have a movie coming out that actually talks about um, relationships with the LGBT correct? Yes. Yeah. Tell it's, us a little bit about your movie and how we can watch that when it's coming out. So one is called Suspect. That's out now on Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. Um, Suspect. We're going to type that in for a second. Right. Um, there's different suspect links, so somehow you can reach me on uh, Inbox Me with Prince Deborah Cardi on Facebook or Dr. Chad Logan on Instagram. I can't accept any more friends on Facebook. I'm sorry. I got 5,000 now. Um, but the major movie, which is a hidden topic in the LB, right. um, mm -hmm. God bless them, in that um, in this community, um, is about domestic violence. It's a hidden topic, and so that movie is coming out very shortly. Um, it's an hour and a half long. I get beat the heck up, um, mm -hmm. but oh. it it was all worth it. Um, the character that played my abuser, abuser. Um, it's totally nothing like that, uh, but it was a wonderful cast, and so we look forward. Uh, we do have another film that is coming out this week. It was supposed to be out this weekend, so it was supposed to be two, but that's called The Retreat. Um, so it's actually um, 